Hi everybody, in our video today we're going to be talking about finding the area of complex shapes. First off, what in the world is a complex shape? A complex shape is a shape that is made up of two or more shapes. That was a lot of shapes in the same sentence. Let's look at an example. I have two shapes drawn on the screen here. On the one in the bottom left, we don't consider this a complex shape because it's just a rectangle. There's only one shape. But the one over here, we can call this a complex shape because we can divide this shape into more than one shape. So if I grab a pen here, if I split this up, we have a triangle there, and then we also have a little rectangle in the lower left. So by dividing up a complex shape into different shapes and knowing the dimensions of that, I'm getting to that in a second, we're able to find the area. Now this sounds really complicated, um, but like I said, if we can figure out the dimensions or the side lengths of the various shapes, then we can find the area, okay? So when you're doing these, especially in the video, it's very helpful that you go ahead and you draw the shape that you see on the screen. The word dimension, this word right here. Dimensions are side lengths, and that you write down the dimensions with the video. Pause the video if you need to so that you have everything written down, okay? Don't just do this in your head. You're actually physically going to need to draw some, some lines, draw some numbers to get comfortable with this, okay? So I want to point something out. Before when I was talking, so here on this shape, this might look intimidating, but I want to point out that these numbers are actually the dimensions, or they're the lengths of certain sides of the shape. So here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to draw this shape in your notebook. Make sure that you write down the dimensions. Draw the shape as best as you can. Pause the video so that you can do it. Now that you have it drawn in your notebook with the dimensions, the first thing we need to do in order to find the area of this entire shape is to divide it into the shapes that we see. Now you might see a different shape than what I see. I'll give you two examples of what I mean. Some of you might divide it like this with the rectangle on top and the rectangle on the bottom. So that might be how you divide up your shapes. Another way that you could do this is oops, divide it like this so that you have the rectangle over here and then kind of almost uh, the square shape over here. Uh, and we know it's a square because this dimension is 11 centimeters and this dimension is 11 centimeters and we know that squares have equal side lengths. So I'm actually going to work with it like this. There is nothing wrong with you doing it the other way, um, but for now we're just going to proceed with the video like this. So I am first going to figure out what is the area of this. All right, and then I'm going to figure out what is the area of my shape over here. And then finally, I'm going to add those areas together to get the whole shape. So working with my dimensions, let's look at my square shape first, okay? Now, as I mentioned, we need to be able to figure out the area, and so you have to know what the area of your shapes are too. So I know that to find the area of a square, we need to do base times height. And here I know that uh, my base is 11 and my height is 11. And I can consider this my base and this my height. Now you might be saying, well, what about this piece down here? Because it says 20 centimeters down here. But I want to remind you that the 20 centimeters is for this entire length, this entire dimension down here. And I know that this dimension of 11 centimeters at the top of the square is already given to me. So a property of squares or a property of parallelograms is that opposite sides are equal to each other. So if this is 11 centimeters, then I know that this is going to be 11 centimeters down here. I'm actually going to write that to help me out. And you should write that too because in future problems we'll do, sometimes you'll need to figure that out and they won't give you specifically numbers. So that being said, let's just plug in some numbers here of 11 times 11. And we know that 11 times 11 is equal to 
121 centimeters squared because centimeters times centimeters are centimeters squared. So that's the area of my square. Let's hop over to our rectangle. We know that our rectangle area is also going to be base times height. We know the base is going to be, oops, sorry about that. The base is going to be nine centimeters and our height is going to be four centimeters. If you were working with the number 20, if we did 20 minus 11, we would end up with nine, which would be the length of this piece right there. So I'm just gonna write that there. So let's do nine times four, which is equal to 36 centimeters squared. Now we found the area of both pieces, so now let's add them together. We have 121 centimeters squared plus 36 centimeters squared, giving us a grand total for this complex shape of 157 centimeters squared.